Hi, CJ. And to Zyla and to all my future grandbabies. Hopefully, um, mom save these and you'll get to see them and play them for your children one day. So today, let's start off by counting first. I know you love to count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah, high five, good job. Today we're going to read Stolen Words, written by Melanie Florence and illustrated by Gabriel Grimard. Stolen words. There we go. Let me move a little bit. She came home from school today, skipping and dancing, humming a song under her breath, clutching a dream catcher she made from odds and ends, bits of string, plastic beads, and brightly colored feathers. Her glossy braids danced across her shoulders, swaying with her black as a raven's wing. Grandpa, she asked, clenching his hand, spinning under his arm before dropping it again. How do you say grandfather in Cree? He stopped breathing for a moment, a lifetime to a seven-year-old. He looked down at her sadly. I don't remember, he answered. I lost my words a long time ago. A frown clouded her face. A f How do you lose words, Grandpa? She asked. They took them away, he answered. She thought for a moment. Where did they go? Take them, she asked. Where they took all of us, he said. Away from home, away from laughter and soft words. Away from our mothers who cried for us. She reached for his gnarled hand. Who took you away, Grandpa? She asked quietly, men and women dressed in black, talking to us with words we did not know, he answered. They reached home and she sat, they sat on the stairs together. Where did they take you, Grandpa? She asked. Away to a school that was cold and lonely, where angry white faces <clears throat> raised their voices and their hands. <clears throat> when we used our words, he answered, they took our words and locked them away, punished us until we forgot them, until we sounded like them. Harsh, sharp words, so different from the sound of our beautiful ones. She touched his weathered face, tried to wipe the sadness away with her soft hands. She looked down at her lap and handed him the dream catcher that she had made for her room. You take this, Grandpa, she said. Maybe it would help you find your words again. He smiled at her, his granddaughter, and touched her innocent face. A face that had never known hard words or raised hands. He smiled and kissed her head.
The next day, she skipped out of school again, smiling widely at her grandfather. She stopped in front of him and took a deep breath. Tanantse, Nimosham, she said. His eyes widened. She smiled brighter than the sun. I found your words, Grandpa, she said. She pulled out a tattered, well-worn paperback out of her book bag. Introduction to Cree, it said. My teacher helped me find this for you at the library. He reached out for it, his hand shaking. Opened it, feeling the soft, much-loved pages under his fingers. No sism, he whispered. Grandchild. The words felt familiar in his mouth. It felt like his home. His mother. He turned the pages of the book carefully. Nam. Nashsinakatin book. He turned another word after word. Win language, his first pages and pages of them. He looked at his granddaughter, his nissicism, grandchild. Thank you, Taniki, he said. Will you read to me, she asked, taking his hand in hers and leading him home. Will you teach me your words? His heart danced as he nodded, holding the book against his chest. The End Love you.